No one knew, no one dreamed, no one foresighted that I could be here in India being played so miraculously by the Indian classical musicians. Guitar, guitar, yes, with my very name, my fable, my past, my history comes to echo. Who could have thought seven centuries ago when I led a nomadic kind of life with gypsies and folk artists of Spain that one day I could be one of the most popular musical instruments of the world? No, nobody thought. But history always has wonders in store. They call me Viola in Spain. I was blended into viola from my two parent instruments, the lute and the cittern. The lute being the ancestor of most modern stringed instruments, first appears in Mesopotamian figurines, plaques and seals of about 2000 BC. It has a pear-shaped body, fretted neck, and head turned back at an angle of about 76 degrees to the front plane of the instrument. And the sitan was also a popular instrument of Europe in the 16th century because of its comparative simplicity. It had a round body, shallow and flat, which I had inherited from it. Well, I was not alone of my kind in the musical world of Europe at that time. I had cousins too, the Pandora and the Orpharian, which were similar to me in nature, but different in shape. The Pandora was four feet high, and its outline was doubly scalloped, forming three lobes. The Orpharian also had an elegant outline with undulating lobes. The Balalaikas in Russia were also my distant cousins having triangular bodies with three strings and the rest resembling very much the Sitan and the Pandora. So there was I, amongst all these instruments, which ultimately gave way to my blending. My English model looked somewhat like a lute with a pear-shaped body flat at the back and with slightly backward slanting peg box. As Shakespeare says, music is the food of love. And in so many ways, the musicians have sought this divine food in me. Out of their romance for nature's beauty and my acoustic charms, emerged a new kind of romanticism. In Spain, I remained popular as a solo instrument being used in typical Spanish music. Gradually, I made my presence felt in the musical scenario of Europe. Though in the beginning I did face many ups and downs, I flourished in the 16th century, declined in the 17th, and then again flourished in the 18th century as I caught the fancy of many European composers.
a race of dedicated virtuosos like Gaspar Sands, Robert D. Vici, Fernando Sor, Joseph Caspar Mertz, Spaniard Francisco Tarrega, and Andre Segovia. They established me in the concert halls. Thus, my enthusiasm for folk-based popular music was supplemented by the grace and aristocracies of classical music. I had traveled with history all the way to the Far East from Europe and then reached the Indian subcontinent, the geography of Europe falling far too short for my ambitious versatility. It was much later that I met a man who understood my genius and added a whole new dimension to my musical life. The man is Pandit Prajbhushan Khabar. prejudices and reservations awaited my arrival here. So in the evening when I opened that box and thought that it was a very, very pleasant surprise which I am going to give to my father, I took the guitar on my lap and played a couple of tunes. So, Suddenly he was looking at me in a very funny sort of manner and he said, is this what uh, you want to learn or you want to play? After living here and in this atmosphere hearing all the great masters and you are ending up playing these tunes on this instrument. So I said, all right, if there is something wrong in the music which I am playing, I will learn better music, I will learn classical music. So I said, then, if you are really serious about learning music, why don't you take up a sitar or a sarod or a veena and learn it in all seriousness. Why are you so keen in playing this instrument only? Some or the other, it didn't suit the things which I had in my mind. And some of and I had also sort of uh, fallen in love with my instrument. So I said that anything which I will play, I want to play on this instrument only. Why not this instrument? It has such a lovely clean sound and something entirely different from the normal other instruments which we have. 
so I decided that I'm going to play this instrument only. So my father said, all right, but one thing you will have to promise me, that you will definitely learn good music and I sincerely hope that you are able to achieve something on this, but you are going to prove yourself by playing real chess Indian classical music and that also to be accepted at the highest levels. It was a sort of a challenge and in all brashness of a youngster, I accepted it. At that time, fortunately, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan had a concert in Ahmedabad. And as normally it was, he was staying with me. So very hesitantly in the evening I asked the Baba, I want to play a guitar. And I promised my father that I'll only play Indian classical music on it. So he said that, yes, I never knew that you are interested in classical music. And leave this sort of, you're not made a bad stick to a sarod like your elder brother and uh, I'll teach you as you like. So then I said, Baba, it's not a matter of sticking to something else. It is what I have promised my father and I've decided that I am definitely going to play it on this instrument. So now the only thing is, how you are going to help me? You tell me this. So Ustad said, all right, if you are so stuck on it, the only thing which I can do is, I'll teach you music and I'll play it to you for, on the sarod. Now you will have to think that how you are going to reproduce it to the nearest point on the guitar. Because as far technically it is concerned, you will have to develop your own technique because I don't play guitar. I said, all right. So he said that there is one condition, that I am going to give you some lessons. And when I come here the next time, the thing is that you play them for me. And if I feel that there is a potential, then only you are going to continue with it. Otherwise then drop with all this idea. Difficulties and struggles are a part of one's life and I never lived in myths. So when he came after three months, so I said, all right, now you listen to me. This is what at least I tried to do. So when he heard me, so he was very pleasantly pleased. And he said that, now I feel that there is definitely something which you will be able to achieve on this. Now you promise me that you are never going to leave it. And the way my instrument, this guitar was responding to all the calls which I was making on it, it became a, just a part, an extension of my mind and my body. In the course of my development, my body was experimented upon when both my Spanish and Hawaiian versions were electrified. But the electrification had had its own limitations. That is why the Indian musician opted for my natural tone and timber. As Pandit Prajbhushan says, when I myself am saying that it's the dominant resonant power of the guitar, the booming sound, the retention of it, for which I have opted for this instrument, then why not an electric guitar, which has a more continuous sound and you can even control the level of the sound. But the basic point to understand is that you don't want a sound which shouldn't end also 
because after all when we are just trying to think in this terms that we are going nearest to the human voice then the modulations can only be there when you know where the sound is going to stop and between that period like a period in which you take one deep breath you have to exhale you have to inhale likewise the sound uh, duration after you strike the string also has to be like one complete inhale and exhale part of our breath now in a electric guitar of course the sound carryover is there but then the basic tone of it and the basic sound of it is of the metal string the timber and the natural uh, sound which only can come from a thing which nature has created that cannot be ever copied when you uh, try to make it a mechanical thing and which uh, that appreciation to that level is not there because the basic thing is that music has to have a soul in it and anything which takes that part of it away from it this basic value is lost now one other very important aspect is that in selecting the instrument for any music there are certain requirements which have to be fulfilled by it the basic difference which we have always felt which is between our music and the music of the west is that we don't jump from a note to another note and actually we use the complete space of the note from one note to another and that is why we have distributed our octave in the 22 shrutis and that is why the requirement which is necessary for any instrument for indian classical music is that it has to have that power to go through an entire gamut of 22 shrutis without a break but all that glitters is not glamour gain always follow pain Before coming to my prime here, I underwent lots of changes. There was something which was entirely lacking in my instrument. And if I play only on these strings and using a Western technique, then the thing is that I would be using the string of the same pitch. I wouldn't be using the string which is required of one octave higher. And that is how the idea of adding a chikari. Thus, Pandit Bridge Bhushan Kabra successfully transformed the innate essence and intricate nuances of the great Indian classical music into my European bred soul. To reach my soul, one must first know my body. This is the sound box of the guitar, having two F-shaped sound holes. Now, the playing strings passes through this bridge and then crosses. the whole effective length of the guitar to reach this bridge known as nut from here the strings passes through the peg box which has keys in it which are used to tie and tune the strings now in between the peg box and the sound box is the portion of the guitar known as the neck which has these white lines known as frets which are marked at an interval of half tones This bridge is used for the chikari string. Sir, the remarkable feature that has been added to the body of guitar is the addition of the sympathetic strings or the tarabs as you may call them. The tarabs have definitely improved the tonal feedback of the instrument. Time was when purest 
looked askance at my intrusion into the Indian traditional domain. But then it was left to Pandit Brijbushan to show how I could afford pure classical abstractions as beautifully as any other plucked instrument of indigenous origin. Now I would like to demonstrate to you the basic requirements which are of our classical music and how the guitar in adapting itself to it in its today's completeness that in the guitar the tension of the sound in the aro and the avro is completely maintained like this now the require of the shrutis and the microtones note this I was launched into the musical circuit of India, but I had a partner too, which was as eager as I about this venture. The name? Well, interestingly enough, Santur. The first time I heard of Santur, and I was absolutely enchanted by it, by its, the range of its sound, and suddenly I had a feeling that again a point of change in my life has come. And destiny has so decided that this is the person whose association is going to become so important in my life and uh, who is going to be really a partner with me to carry out the ambitious goal which I had decided for myself to achieve. So I asked Shilji, your instrument is such, sounds so wonderful and uh, I feel that there are certain elements in it which can only be produced on a santhu. Likewise, the instrument which I play, I feel there are certain parts in it which can only be played on the guitar. I would definitely like that we should play together so that gradually we are able to develop a musicality which will be absorb, able to absorb the real uh, spirit of these two instruments. A truly musical experiment always has an aesthetic serenity with it. The most important event which happened in the history of the guitar was the recording of the call of the valley. This was a joint effort with the santur and the flute 
पंडित शिव कुमार शर्मा एंड हरि प्रसाद चौरसिया इन दिस द इंस्ट्रूमेंट प्लेड द रोल ऑफ मेल एंड फीमेल कैरेक्टर्स दैट इज द गिटार एंड द संतू एंड द फ्लूट रिप्रेजेंटेड द एटमोसफियर this record after its release took up some time to pick up but once it picked up it really zoomed the team voted for indian classical music status and they achieving a landmark in such a dignified and remarkable manner showed the potential which was inherent in the two instruments and it received the blessing of all the musicians all over the world and i am proud to be a part of it that in any part of the globe wherever you go this is one record the music which has bound all of us together with the lp called the valley my call was indeed heard in the musical valley of the world and the world also came to know about this new endeavor of mine the world also listened keenly to the dozen and more lp in those early years of my life in indian music what has so far happened to the guitar is now a matter of history but there are a lot of more chapters to be added to its odyssey and many more stairs to climb